three, two. Hello, everybody. E here. Welcome back to another book review. Um, today, I'm talking about an author that comes highly recommended. Um, I say that, but I, I, I've tried him before and I have not liked him. But people keep saying, try his new one. Uh, well, actually, this was back when it was new. Uh, he's He has another collection out now that's newer than this. But um, read Adam Neville. Try The Reddening. Um, if you didn't like uh, The Ritual, I loved the movie. Didn't like the, well, I couldn't get through the book. And from what I understand about the ending of The Ritual, that's a good thing. Um, it was explained to me uh, what happens at the end of the book. And I just kind of laughed. Um, but, uh, okay. So, it didn't go well. Uh, we're, we're talking about The Reddening by Adam Neville. I'll throw up a whatever up here. Um, uh, first, first off, first off, I didn't want to read the book because I don't gel too much with his writing. I think he's verbose for the sake of verbosity. I don't think that all of all the words that he uses are needed. Um, and this is coming from a Stephen King fanboy who rarely says that he overwrites. I think everything that King puts into a book needs to be there. This, not so much. This this feels like a Barker's Damnation game in that there's a lot of stuff in here that could just be completely excised. It's just words. It's superfluous uh, words. That's, that's the best way to put it. And a lot of people, a, a lot of times when people say the book's overwritten by two, three hundred pages, they don't know why uh, they're, they're saying that. They just feel like it went on too long. There are whole chunks of this book where I was like, that has absolutely no purpose. I kept listening, kept listening, absolutely no purpose, no purpose. Uh, even the world building, he tends to repeat himself. Chapter after chapter, he tends to repeat descriptions, not in the same words. But he's already described that thing, and he goes on to describe it again from another character's point of view, but it's the exact same thing, just in different words. It's not like the, char the next character is having a different uh, experience than the other one. Uh, that's the next thing I'll go to, is the characters. Absolutely hated the characters. Uh, I couldn't tell one apart from the other. I think one's name was Cat and one name one's name was Helene. Uh, those two... It completely interchangeable. I, I did. I, did I, I caught nothing. Um, now, if there were things, it's probably because the book bored me so badly that that I literally couldn't figure out who these two characters were. Um, the uh, the next thing I'll say is the going back to the writing and the verbosity. The the overriding that's the pacing the pacing I, I didn't like the pacing at all I didn't like the the characters and the dread I just didn't feel a whole lot of dread why because I felt like I read this before I hadn't read this before I saw this before this felt like much it felt like many scenes were taken whole hog from the movie the ritual now I didn't finish the book I gave up after 50 pages because like I said I can't stand this dude's writing it's just not for me if you love it that's fine go love it but it, it wasn't for me. Now, uh, the, uh, so the characters, the dread, the pacing, all that, I'm giving this two stars. The book itself, the story itself, we're going to talk about the audiobook here in a second, but the, the book itself, I'm going to give two stars. Um, I'm not going to take away for the audiobook. I'm going to talk about the audiobook as a se separate entity. Um, but the book itself, the story itself, I'm giving two stars. Um, that's all I can give it. Uh, the, I would give it one, but it is... There, there wasn't a whole lot of bad writing. It's just too much of the same thing over and over again. R very little character development. Loads and loads of situational and descriptive narration. Um, like, this thing looks like this, going on and on and on and on and on. Okay, now let me go to the audiobook. The audiobook is one of the worst audiobook productions I have ever listened to in my life. Period, hands down, for a book by a bigger named author. This dude has a movie. Has a movie out. He has a movie deal. Deal. So I'm calling him a bigger named author. The production quality is utter ass. You can literally hear clicking on the microphone. You can hear where the narrator screws up and clicks his tongue to go back to find with, so he knows where the error was so he can delete that. You hear these things that shouldn't be there. And his pronunciation... Okay, first off, there are characters with accents sometimes. Uh, sometimes a, a character will have an accent. Sometimes a character won't have an accent. The narrator is American or sounds American for a British book. This should have been done by a Brit. It, it should have been. I mean, hands down, it should have been. Um, it happens across the pond. The writing... It, it's very weird to hear things from... 
you know, from Brit- Britain, British English from an American voice. It, it's very weird. It's distracting. But on top of that, the narrator forgets, obvi- seemingly forgets that some of these characters are supposed to have accents at certain periods of time. Um, now, once again, if there was a reason for this, I don't know why, but if there was a reason for this, I completely missed it. Um, if there is, go ahead and tell me down there why they should have you know, different accents at different times. Sometimes they're American, some, the same character, sometimes American, sometimes British. Now, but I think the biggest problem with this is the, uh, the pronunciation of certain words. And I, you know, I have problems pronounce, pronouncing things uh, a lot of the time. And it's, a, it's an honest problem of mine. I, I don't try to do it. It's just how, how it comes out. I mispronounce things a lot of the st- time. I probably have some form of speech impediment in that way. But the, I'm not an audiobook narrator. I don't, I, I, in fact, I tell people I don't read in public. I try not to read in public because I am so bad at it. This author pronounced crescendo as crescendo. Um, I checked Google, uh, the pronunciation there. I checked videos, pronunciations, and it was crescendo every single time, both American and uh, British English. Another one was ethereal. He pronounced it ethereal, uh, which is a common common mistake. Uh, but this guy's a narrator. He's selling a product. He's narrating a product for sale. I'm not selling these YouTube videos. So if I'm going to pronounce something, it's whatever. This guy is narrating a, a, a product for payment. Um, but I, I, once again, I checked, do, uh, do Brits say uh, ethereal, ethereal? They do not. Um, but again, he's American, so he should be pronunci- pronouncing these things as an American. <clears throat> Sorry, as an American. I, my throat's kind of scratchy today. As an American, but he's not. Uh, and that it really feels like he should have a British accent all the way through because there's plenty of Britishisms or whatever you want to call it. There's plenty of British English. This is written in that way, but it's with an American accent. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I don't uh, I don't know if that had any bearing on me liking the story or whatever. I went back and I kind of analyzed it and I was like, no, because his narration didn't affect the uh, the droning narration, the the things being described eight different ways, but in the same way. And I know that sounds odd, but literally what I mean is the, the flower was blue. The garden had blue flowers. You know, it's that kind of thing. You're saying the same thing, just with different words. Um, there was a lot of that stuff, not specifically that line, but you get what I'm saying. So all in all, I'm giving this book Two stars. It is easily one of the worst books I have read this year, in my opinion. Uh, most of my problems are subjective, so if you love Adam Neville, go love Adam Neville. That's fine. Adam Neville, if you watch this, I ain't got nothing against you, man. I just don't like your writing. Um, that it, it's th- there's just something about this author's writing that I, it just feels feels like he's trying too hard. Um, I, I I don't know how else to put it. That's how it feels to me. And to see him writing the way and to have actual objective issues with it. Okay, he's already described this thing. He's describing it another way. Easily, I could I could edit probably 50 pages out of this book. I'm not going to go a whole hog like most people. You could get rid of 200 pages. No, at least 50 pages could be removed from this book and it would not hurt this. It, 50 pages of description at least could be removed from this. Um, the, the, the several different ways that he, pr- that did not, he pronounces, sorry, I'm still stuck on the narrator. Seven different ways he describes rocks. Um, it's, it's just, it, it was too much. Um, I think there's a, there's a happy medium somewhere between verbosity and too little information, sparse information. And that, that happy spot in the middle, I think King does so well. I don't think Neville does well at all, but definitely if you're into Clive Barker, this is overwritten like Clive Barker's novels, not his short stories, but definitely like his novels. And I'm kind of afraid to read Neville's short stories because the guy is so verbose, but if his short stories are better than his, he might be like Barker in that sense too. If his short stories are better, go ahead and hype him up down there in the chat. I don't care. But did you love The Reddening by Adam Neville? Uh, did you hate it? Either way, let me know what you thought down there in the doobly-doo. Give me some descriptions. Give me some examples of what you didn't like or what you absolutely loved so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another book, audiobook review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.